There are many different available sizes of trailer balls and ball mounts on the market, so simply walking into your local Kurt dealer and picking the first one you see isn't always going to be your best option. There are three things that you need to consider when selecting a ball mount. How much weight you're going to be towing, what size receiver tube the trailer hitch has, and finally, how much rise or drop is needed to provide a level and safe towing setup. To determine the amount of weight that you're going to be towing, you can look at the weight rating plate on your trailer. If your trailer isn't equipped with a weight ratings plate, you can take it to a certified scale. Our trailer weighed in at 2,500 pounds. The hitch that we have on this vehicle is a Class 5 extra duty trailer hitch capable of handling 15,000 pounds. It also has a 2 inch receiver tube which lets us know that we need a ball mount with a 2 inch shank. Now we need to determine how much rise or drop is needed to provide a level and safe towing setup. To do this we need a receiver height measurement. Take the measurement from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube. Our measurement here is 21.75 inches. The next measurement we need is the coupler height. To do this, we're going to use the hand level and the trailer jack to level out the trailer. And then take the measurement from the ground to the bottom of the coupler. Our measurement here is 15 and a half inches. Now that we have both of our measurements, we need to subtract our receiver height from our coupler height. If that number is negative, that'll show you how much drop you need. If that number is positive, that will show you how much rise. We take our coupler height of 15 and a half inches and subtract our receiver height of 21 and three quarters inches, leaving us with a negative 6.25. Round that to the nearest number and that gives us a negative six inches. This lets us know that we need a ball mount with a six inch drop. Now that we've determined how much drop we need, we can move on to selecting the trailer ball. Typically, coupler manufacturers will stamp or label the correct ball size that they're designed to work with right on the coupler itself. If you ever find that the trailer ball that the coupler is designed to work with doesn't fit, don't panic. Most couplers are adjustable, so simply adjusting the coupler will do the trick. To do this, simply tighten or loosen the adjustment nut located underneath the coupler. The ball size specified by our trailer here is 2 inches, but that's not the only important part of selecting a trailer ball. The shank diameter is just as important. We need to make sure that the shank diameter of the trailer ball matches the whole size of the ball mount. So we need to find a ball mount capable of handling the gross trailer weight of 2,500 pounds, a drop of six inches, a two inch shank, and a trailer ball with a shank diameter that matches the whole size in the ball mount. It's important to note that we can only tow to our lowest capacity component rating of our towing setup. So even though we have a trailer hitch capable of 15,000 pounds, a ball mount rated at 7,500 pounds, our maximum towing capacity is 6,000 pounds due to the rating of the trailer ball. Having a level towing setup is important. If your ball mount is set too low, this can take the weight off the front of your vehicle, resulting in poor braking and steering conditions. If it's set too high, it will displace the weight behind your trailer axles, resulting in trailer sway. That's why it's so important to have a safe and level towing setup. Thank you for taking the time to learn how to select the correct ball mount and trailer ball for your towing setup. If you'd like more information on towing, please visit us at KurtMFG.com. Kurt, the first name in towing products.